Hello and welcome to video one of three where we map out how to get business credit for your EIN number that's not linked to your personal social security number and we decode how to easily get business loans and credit lines even when you think you can't qualify for business financing now. So in today's video we are going to cover how you can immediately get business credit that's linked to your EIN number and not your personal social even if you're a startup or even if you have consumer credit issues now. We're going to talk about how you can use this initial credit to then immediately immediately start getting access to credit with most major retail sources like Walmart and Amazon, Staples and Apple, Lowe's, Ford, Best Buy, even to get Visa, MasterCards and American Express cards with limits that are 10 to 100 times higher than what you're used to in the consumer side. And we're going to talk about how helping how business credit helps you qualify for loans and credit lines to get even more money to grow your business. Now in the next video, in video two, we're going to be diving into business loans. We're going to be talking about three ways to get business loans and credit lines that your banker will just absolutely not tell you about. We're going to talk about how to get business financing even with credit issues, even if you don't have collateral. We're going to talk about options where you can get approved even as a startup and even if you have no cash flow. We're going to talk about how to get loans and credit lines with interest rates that are way lower than SBA, even 2% and less. And we're going to be talking about how to get money to grow your business even when you think you can't get money at your own bank. And in video three, we're going to it all together. We're going to talk about the easiest and fastest way for you to get both money for your business through credit lines and loans. We're going to be talking about how to access all legitimate funding programs in one place, which helps you get even more access to capital to grow. We're going to be discussing how to have a team work for you to get you the best terms, negotiate on your behalf to get you the best loans and credit lines so you have the low payments that make it affordable to get access to capital to grow. And we're going to be talking about how to condense years of business credit building to only months and how you can get concierge service to help hold your hand through the process to get results even faster. So that will be coming up in video three. So let's dive in and let's talk more about business credit. And first, let's address the elephant in the room. Most businesses fail to get access to business credit. As a matter of fact, over 90% of business owners don't know anything about business credit per entrepreneur. And of the ones that do, well, a lot of them fail because they don't know that you can get business credit regardless of personal credit quality. A lot of people are putting social security numbers on applications when they don't need to and in doing so attaching a personal guarantee and a personal credit check which we're going to show you how to get around in this video. We also see a lot of people make mistakes because they don't understand that business credit building is a process. There are very specific steps you must take in order to succeed. If you don't take those steps or take those steps out of order then you'll typically fail and in this video we're going to talk about the right steps, the correct process for you to build business credit so you don't fall in to these kind of pitfalls that so many people fall into when trying to build business credit. So this video is going to make sense for you if you're looking for money to start or to grow your existing business. If you're looking for high limit credit accounts, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 individual limit credit cards that are not linked to your personal social that you can get regardless of personal credit and without a guarantee, then you're definitely in the right place. And if you're looking for the easiest, the fastest way to get money to grow for your business, this this is exactly what we're going to be diving into today and we're also going to be talking about how you set up a credible foundation that helps make it easy for you to access credit lines and loans. So these are all going to be the type of topics that we're going to cover. If these are the type of things that interest you, then you're definitely in the right place. So let's start at the beginning. What is business credit? Well. Business credit is credit that's obtained in a business name. So with business credit, the business itself is building its own credit profile that's linked under the EIN number. So much similar to what you're used to with consumer credit where you built it under your social, with business credit, you're establishing a credit profile and score and obtaining credit for the business in the business's name linked to the business EIN number. Now this credit again is in the business name. It's based on the business's ability to pay, not the business owners. So because of this, there's no personal credit check and there's no personal guarantee needed. Now then, once the business builds this established, establishes this initial credit, then the business can qualify for high limit revolving credit cards at most major retailers, most major stores like Office Depot and Staples and Home Depot and Lowe's, Sam's Club and Costco, Dell and Apple, BP, Chevron, Sunoco, Canoco, Walmart, um, even MasterCard, Amazon, Visa, Amex, even auto vehicle financing is all available without a personal guarantee and without a 
personal credit check if you're following the steps that we're going to map out today. So this basically also makes you more lendable. Lenders are looking at commercial credit reports to determine if you'll get approved, how much you'll get, and the terms you'll pay. So by building your business credit, you become more lendable. It helps access more access or gives you more access to capital through credit lines and loans at the absolute best terms. So there's a lot of reasons that business credit probably makes sense for you. One, it has absolutely no effect on your personal credit. There's no adverse impact on your consumer credit scores because firstly, this credit doesn't report on your consumer credit reports. So you could max out the credit cards if you want, and it won't affect your utilization of your FICO score because none of the credit shows on your consumer credit reports. Plus, since you're not providing a social security number or a personal credit check, there's no inquiries put on your consumer credit, which also improves your score or doesn't adversely affect your score. And it also gives you more access to loans and credit lines where inquiries or the number of inquiries you have really do matter. So again, it's not based on consumer credit quality. So because you're not providing a social security number in the path that we're going to show you today, you can get approved no matter how bad your credit may be because you're not even providing your social so there's no consumer credit check for approval. And even if you have good credit, well, there's no personal guarantee. So this means you're not personally liable for your business debts. SCORE, Inc., SBA, almost all financial authorities talk about the need for separating consumer and commercial credit for this reason, to separate your actual liability. Ability. When you build business credit, you're building it in the business name. The business is liable for the credit that you're obtaining, not you as an individual. Business credit can be built really fast. If you follow the steps we're going to talk about in this video today, then you're going to be able to start getting vendor credit immediately, and then we're also going to be able to expand it from there so you can get access to even more. We're also going, another reason that business credit is so phenomenal is that anybody can see your business credit reports. And this is the reason you really need to focus on growing your business credit. It because if you do, then it really improves the perception that lenders and credit issuers and suppliers have about your business. But you also have to keep in mind that potential customers, uh, existing customers, potential investors in your business, people that you may sell your business to, they're all going to look at your commercial credit reports because they can. They don't need your permission. This information is public knowledge. So because anybody can access your business credit reports and scores, it's really important that you control what's on there so you control the perception that lenders, credit issuers, suppliers, customers, clients, competitors, everyone has about the credibility of your business. Now, business credit also gives you much greater borrowing ability because you have your consumer credit that you have now and commercial credit as well. So for example, if you go into Staples today and you get a consumer credit card, you can't go into Staples again tomorrow and get another one because you already have one. But you can go into Staples today, get a consumer credit card. You could go in tomorrow and get a business credit card at Staples. Uh, the only difference would be that you're limits would be substantially higher on the business credit card. So it really gives you more than double the borrowing ability because you're establishing a commercial credit profile that works alongside of your consumer credit profile. And as I mentioned, the limits are substantially higher. Per SBA, limits on business credit accounts are 10 to 100 times higher than what you may be accustomed to on the consumer credit side. This is because businesses have a greater need or capacity for credit. You may never need to spend $20,000 at Dell on home computers, but you very well could need to spend $20,000 at Dell for business computers. So because of this, limits are substantially higher on business credit accounts. It's very easy to get 10, 20, $30,000 limits or more following what we're going to teach in this video series um, in the process of six months or less. Now you can get approved even when you can get, can't get a bank loan. Even when you can't get alternative financing, even as a startup. So business credit is a catch-all. Anybody can qualify for business credit as long as they have a business. So even if you don't have cash flow and credit and collateral and these other things that lenders like to see that give you loans and credit lines, you're still able to access very high limit business credit cards. Okay, You also can get access to loans and credit lines to grow your business because you have established business credit. Now, business credit's not usually the only factor that's looked at for credit lines and loans, but by having business credit, you have a much better chance of getting approved for the best terms and the most amount of money as well. And it also gives you a competitive advantage. If you have access to money, then obviously you have a much greater advantage than other businesses that don't have access to the type of credit that we're going to be talking about. Now, business credit quality determines several things when it comes to loans. If you're going to get approved, how much you'll get approved for, and the actual terms that you'll pay as well. Now, you could be denied financing based on business 
business credit quality, even if you have no business credit established. And this is because unlike with consumer credit, you could be issued a failing business credit score even if you don't actually have any business credit reporting on your credit report. So let's look at the actual commercial credit report so we can see what this looks like. So as I mentioned, you can be issued a failing business credit score even if you have no credit reporting because, because the fact that you are in business and have no credit, that alone makes you look unestablished. In some cases, if you've been around for years, it maybe even appears that you're on the verge of bankruptcy. So because of this, because of not having established credit but being an established business, this is why you'll often be issued failing scores. So if we look at some snippets from actual commercial credit reports, here's a perfect example. Here's somebody that has a 28 score and only being recommended for $1,000 worth of credit. And then we see here that they're very high risk. So on the actual current financial stability risk score, they're about as high risk as you can go. And you can see right here that the factors that make them high risk is that they have lack of active trades. They don't have any trade accounts. That's what's causing them to be high risk. And then we see this overview where there's no trade lines. It's all zeros. There's actually no trade lines on the credit report. There's no accounts reporting. So here's a perfect example. If Experian and Equifax, for example, know your business exists, know your industry that you're in, they will automatically populate a credit report and give you this kind of failing score. You'll have be considered high risk for lenders and credit issuers because of a lack of trades, even if you have no accounts reporting. Now let's look at the result of what we're going to show you today. What we're going to show you today is even with one account reporting, which you're able to get again after we actually go this over this with you today, you can then easily turn that failing score into a great score with even one account. And the reason this is possible is because business credit scores are based only on on how you pay. There's only one real factor that almost all of the commercial credit scores look at, and it's how you pay your bills. So if you get even one account and you pay it as agreed, then you can move your score up to a low risk category. So we here see here, this is a 96 out of 100 score. Commercial credit scores typically range from 0 to 100. We just saw a low score of 28, which is a high risk. Now we're looking at one of the highest scores you can get, a 96. We also see that they're, they're the low risk here, this is about as low risk as you can get. So we've really moved the scale here. We moved all the way from one of the highest risk categories you can get to one of the lowest risk. And we can see here that the factors affecting the score, the average age of commercial accounts. So this is a brand new credit report. Somebody's just starting to get credit. And that's the only reason the score is not a perfect score. And we also see here that all this was established with even one account. And again, in this video series, we're going to show you how to do exactly this, how to come in and start getting accounts that even one account can take you from having no credit established or a failing credit score like we just looked at, all the way to having one of the highest scores you could have, being low risk for lenders and credit issuers, uh, and completely turn the tables on your business credit reports. And here, you can see somebody made that jump very quickly. So we can see their score was 28, just like we showed, and now they've jumped up to 93 and even raised it a little all the way up to 96. So to go from failing all the way to really successful, really great score only took this one account on the business credit report to get there. And this is what we're going to be mapping out in this video series. Now, there's other things that you should know about this as well, because as you continue to grow your credit, the business reporting agencies recommend for you more money. They help you get higher approvals on credit lines, loans, and credit cards. So a lot of people don't realize this, but business credit reports completely say how much you should be recommended for. Even if you have lower scores because you haven't paid your bills as agreed, as you continue to get more and more accounts on your business credit reports, the amount of credit that the reporting agencies recommend to lenders and credit issuers continues to grow. So Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian, they all have a recommended amount of credit that lenders and credit issuers are seeing to make decisions on how much money you should get for that credit card, that credit line, that loan. So we've already looked at a couple examples here. We looked at that first example of the failing score where somebody only had a thousand dollar recommended credit. Then we looked at that one person that had one account to the credit report and instantly jumped up to twenty five hundred dollars in recommended credit. Well here's another example of somebody that's being recommended for almost seven thousand dollars worth of credit. Their score is twenty seven because they're not actually paying all their bills as agreed and you can see here that they only have two accounts. So with only two accounts on the commercial credit report they've now jumped up all the way to $7,000 in recommended credit. Here's somebody that's being recommended for almost $16,000 in credit, $15,600. And they only have three accounts on their credit report. So again, 
The more accounts you start adding to your commercial credit report, the more financially responsible the reporting agencies determine that you are and the higher amount of credit they recommend to credit issuers and lenders. And then that means the higher amount of loans, credit lines, and credit card limits that you'll actually be able to access. Here's another example of somebody being recommended for 65600 in credit. And again, they only have four accounts on their credit report. And here's another example of somebody being recommended for $724,000 worth of credit. And they have a very well established credit profile as you can see here. There's about 12 or 15 trade lines here. So as you see it, the more accounts, the more trade lines, which is basically an account on your business credit report, the more of these accounts that actually show on your commercial credit report, especially the better you manage them and pay the bills as agreed, then the more the credit recommendation increases all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and this really sets the baseline for you to be able to get loans credit lines as well as high limit credit cards so it's also important to note that every successful business in this country that's highly successful has business credit whether they're publicly owned or whether they're privately owned and this is really a myth a lot of people think that you have to be big to get business credit but that's not the case at all you do need to have business credit to ever get big though. So let's take a look at some of the biggest privately and publicly owned companies in this country. Here's a look at Facebook. You can see here with Experian, they have 40 trade lines reporting. Here's Dell that has 83. They've been around much longer, obviously. Microsoft, been around since the 70s, has 131 trade. Apple, been around since the 70s with 138 trade lines. So think about this. A trade line is an account on their commercial credit report. So they have 138 accounts on their business credit report. If you think about how many you have on your consumer credit report that'll kind of give you an idea of how substantial the number is of accounts they have. So a lot of people think that Apple is able to get money just because they're Apple, that lenders lend them money just because they're Apple, but that's not the case. What's happening is lenders are pulling their credit report, seeing all these trade lines, seeing good payment histories, and again, as you just saw, with even 12 or 15, you can get a recommendation of almost three-quarter million. So that's why these companies are being able to get millions and millions and millions, even tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars lent to them because they have so many trade lines established and they're paying those bills as agreed. Here's Pilot Flying J with 153 trades. Publix right here in Lakeland, Florida with 171 trades. Trade lines. Walmart here in Bentonville, Arkansas has 513 trades. That's more by far than we've seen. So a perfect example of Walmart. You know, a lot of people don't realize that 80% of what Walmart Walmart sells, they actually have paid for by their customers before they actually buy it. So a perfect example is Bounty Paper Towels. When but Walmart buys Bounty Paper Towels, they don't go to Bounty and pay cash for those. They use their business credit to buy those paper towels. They put the paper towels on their shelves. You come in and buy the paper towels. You give Walmart money. Walmart takes your money and pays off the credit that they use to borrow from to get the paper towels from Bounty. They do this with the majority of products they put on their shelves. Like I said, 80% of the actual money that Walmart has access to or what they buy and put on the shelves, they're buying using business credit. This is the reason they've become the number one retailer in the world. They're very good at using other people's money to grow, which is why they have 513 trades. Here's Mars Incorporated. They make Mars bars with 22 trades. But here's a look at some companies that are pretty new into building business credit. These companies have been building business credit less than a year with us. And we see here, well, this company has eight trades. Well, Mars that makes Mars bars has 22. So this is almost a, more than really a third as many trade lines as Mars Corporated or more Mars has. Here's 14. So this is basically two thirds as many trade lines as the Mars company actually has. And again, these are companies that have been around for less than a year building business credit. So it's a myth that you have to be big to build business credit. The reality is you, whether you're a small, medium, or large-sized business, can follow the exact same steps that the biggest publicly and privately owned companies have taken to build their business credit, and in doing so, it gives you a much greater ability to access the capital that you need to grow. So now that we've talked about what business credit is, how it works, the benefits, why it makes sense, we've looked at what this process looks like on commercial credit reports. We've determined that these credit reports that you're establishing are essential to getting money through loans, 
credit lines and credit cards to grow. Now the question is, well, how do you build business credit? Well, here's a perfect example of somebody that we just showed, Success Tax Relief, who built business credit less than a year and a little bit more about their story. So from the samples, we went to our bank and get a, to get a business line of credit, and they turned us down. We got started with the finance suite, and set up our business credibly, and built our business credit. After following the steps, we've now secured over 96,000 in business credit cards and just applied for the Platinum American Express and got approved instantly with no limit. Now we have four to five different companies call us every day trying to give us money, and that's a really good problem to have. We're excited that if you don't have business credit yet, you should get involved with this program to have the same results that we have. So here's a perfect example and this is very typical of what happens when you build business credit you go from getting denied for loans and credit lines because they're pulling business credit reports and seeing you being unestablished all the way to once you start to develop and build your business credit reports it's much easier to be able to get loans and high limit credit cards even credit cards like American Express that often is issued without limits and again the samples use up to about a hundred thousand um, dollars a month on their business credit card just the one card they've received received and they've received uh, many, many, many cards uh, since they actually provided this testimonial. So what's the steps to build business credit? Well, we start with step one. Lenders and credit issuers have a secret unpublished set of standards that you must meet to actually get approved uh, when you apply. If you meet these standards, you often get automated approvals. And you've probably seen this before where you go apply for a credit card and you get an instant decision. Well, there's not a person that's obviously making that decision. It's computers making the decision and the computers making a decision to give you approval because you actually meet this set of standards that they have. Now, unfortunately, if you don't meet the standards, you typically get denied and more than likely you've seen this before too. When you apply, you get that message on the screen that says you'll hear by mail in seven to 10 days and it usually results in a denial. Well, the hear by mail in seven to 10 days is because in the consumer world, they're required to notify you if they deny you credit per the Fair Credit Reporting Act. The problem is there is no Fair Credit Reporting Act in the business world. So you're oftentimes denied by credit, denied for credit cards, loans, and credit lines for your business, and you never know why. And the reason was because you don't have established business credit, but there's no law that requires that the lender actually notify you that that was the reason that you get denied. So you've got to set up their business credibly first before getting credit and financing. You need to understand what these approval standards are so you can meet them. And once you actually meet the standards, then that's really the key to coming in and being able to get approved. So the very first thing is you want to set up an entity, preferably a corporation or LLC, because if you're a sole proprietor or partnership, the problem there is you and the business are one and the same, and you'll always be liable for what happens in the business. But by setting up a corporation or LLC, you and the business are separate, and you can also separate you and the business's credit profile as well. You want to stay away from business names that indicate that you're in a high risk industry. And there's a lot of high risk industries out there. And in video three, I'll show you how to even access a list of all the high risk industries that are out there. So you'll know when you choose your name that you want to avoid to make sure you have the best chance of getting loans and credit lines. Okay. Now, another thing is you've got to get your EIN number from the IRS. Business credit is built under your EIN number. A lot of people think that it's built under the Dunn's number from Dun & Bradstreet, and that's not the case. It's actually built under your EIN, so you need to make sure you have that EIN before you start building business credit. You also need to have proper licensing to operate. Sometimes you need licensing for your industry in your county, in your state. You need to make sure that you have that licensing before you start applying for business credit. You also want to make sure that all your online listings have the same information as what's on your application. This is one of the biggest reasons business loans actually get denied because you apply for a loan at your bank and the name on the application doesn't match exactly what's on the Secretary of State records. As a matter of fact, in video three, I'll walk through a way or how we can actually help you do four checks that are necessary to make sure that your information is congruent and if you fail any of those checks that's probably the reason that you would get denied for loans or credit lines okay now the other aspect of setting up your business credibly is to get a professional website and email address nowadays every business that's looked at credibly by lenders or credit issuers has an established professional looking website they have email address on the application that's a professional email address it's not a Yahoo it's not a Google type email address it's a you know your name at your company 
lenders.com type of email address. So this is important. These are the type of things that lenders and credit issuers are looking for. You need a physical business address. If you don't have a physical biz ad business address or don't have a need for one, well then try to get access to a virtual address. A virtual address is better than using a home address because you're renting an address and getting mail there and it makes it look like and gives the perception that you're in a web big office building even when you're just renting the address to get mail there. Now last resort use a home address but you never want to use a UPS address or a PO box. UPS and addresses and PO boxes will absolutely get you denied because lenders and credit issuers have a database that they store UPS and PO box addresses and their computers cross-reference this database and if you're using one you'll automatically get denied. If you're using a home address some sources will still deny you. So for example you're not going to be able to get Walmart credit card without a personal guarantee or without a business credit check if you use a home address but you will be able to get a Staples credit card. So again, by using a business address or virtual address, that'll allow you to get almost all different kinds of business credit cards without a personal guarantee or without a credit check. If you use a home address, some will, won't approve you and others will. If you use a P.O. Box or a UPS address, most will deny you just because of that. You need to get a phone number set up and you need to make sure that phone number is listed with 411. This is one of the basic requirements that you must meet to get initial credit established. And in video three, we're we're going to show you how to do this for free. Usually this can cost about $350 to $400 a year to get, but in video three, we're going to show you how you can actually get the 411 for free, even if you're not listed now. This is really important, especially as a startup, because they look at the fact that you're established for 411 as being an established business, because you can't just go to 411 directly and get your phone number listed. You have They have to basically find your information with Google, Bing, Yahoo, all these online sources, and as a startup, you're not at those online sources. So you could wait months or even a year or more to get listed with 411, or you could expedite that process with what we'll show you in video three. You need to make sure you have a toll-free number and a fax number as well. And again, in video three, we'll talk to you more about how to get these type of things at the mo most affordable um, investment that you can actually get. Okay, so now we've gone through step one. We've set up the business credibly. Everything on the application that you're going to be using to apply for business credit, you've made sure meets lender and credit issuer standards so you have the best chance of getting approved. So now in step two, we want to start getting you access to your business credit reports and the business credit reporting agencies. Now you can get set up with the reporting agencies by first seeing if you have a profile established with them. Okay, so you want to do a free search with Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian because you want to see do they have anything on your business now remember as we looked at in the beginning you could be issued a credit profile and a score with a failing score just because you exist and even if you have no credit we need to make sure that that's not what's happening so in order to do that you need to do a free set a free search with all three of the reporting agencies to do this and again in video three we're going to show you how to do a free search with DMB Equifax and Experian to figure this out versus paying money to actually pull credit reports to figure that out on your own. You need to get your done several with Dun and Bradstreet. Now, this is something Dun and Bradstreet will oftentimes charge $1,500 to $2,000 for to get your Dunn's number and to activate your credit profile as well as give you access to a few more things that we'll talk about uh, down the road. Okay, so you don't want to pay this if you don't actually need to. And in video three, we're going to talk to you about how you don't have to pay the $1,500 or $2,000 that Dun and Bradstreet will often tell you you need to pay. If you go to get your Dunn's number, what will happen is you will be contacted by DMB by email and phone, and they will talk to you about buying their $1,500 to $2,000 package again. In video three, we're going to talk more about how you can get this Dunn's number without having to pay anything to do it. You also need to fix inaccuracies on your credit reports. It's hard to build a good business credit profile and score on top of a bad one, so you need to make sure that you fix any negative information that may be on there before you actually come in and start building business credit. And again, in video three, we're going to show you an easy way that 
that has so far a massive success rate to be able to fix and remove any derogatory items that may be inaccurate on your commercial credit reports with Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and with Experian. So now that we've gone through this process, now you've gone through, you've set up your business credibly, you've checked your reports with the reporting agencies, you've gotten your DUNS number, the next thing you want to do is to start to apply for actual credit. Now just like with consumer credit, you can't get credit for your business unless you have some kind of initial business credit profile and score established. So a perfect example here is that if you go into Staples, and try to get a consumer credit card and you have no credit on your uh, no FICO score no consumer credit established they're going to deny you but if you go into Staples with a FICO score of even 650 let's say and you have a few accounts on your credit report well then you're probably going to get approved well the same thing is true in the commercial world you're not going to be able to walk into Staples and get a credit card when you have no business credit established for your business unless you have good credit or willing to provide a personal guarantee but if you walk into Staples Staples with some accounts established on your business credit reports, then you can get approved without the guarantee and without the credit check. The key is that you've got to establish an initial business credit profile and score, and there's three real ways to actually do this. Now, the first way I just mentioned is to pay Dun and Bradstreet fifteen hundred to two thousand for what they call the credit builder, where you get your Dun's number, where you get your credit profile activated, and then you activate your credit profile because they're basically helping you take existing accounts you already already have and adding them to your business credit reports. So this is a one alternative to be able to establish initial business credit, but there's a couple drawbacks. One, they're only adding trade lines on your Dun and Bradstreet credit report. You're not doing anything to build your Equifax or Experian. So even if you pay this money, you're still going to have to go with one of the other two options I'm going to show you, because if you don't do that, then the problem is, is that you, you, at, you won't get approved for a lot of credit or loans because you won't have established your Equifax and Experian commercial credit report. So think of it like this. On the consumer credit side, you have TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You have credit with all three. Imagine what would happen if you only ever built credit with TransUnion and never built credit with Equifax and Experian. Well, that would be real problematic because a lot of credit issuers, a lot of lenders look at Equifax and Experian and all those would deny you if you only ever built TransUnion. You'd never be able to get a mortgage. You'd struggle to get a car loan. You'd struggle to get most credit cards. Same thing in the commercial world. If you only build credit with Dun & Bradstreet, you've got a real problem. You have to focus on Equifax and Experian. So this is a money that you really don't need to invest. You might as well as go with one of the other options, save yourself the $1,500 to $2,000 and build credit with all three instead of just Dun & Bradstreet. The other problem with Credit Builder is that a lot of trade lines can't be added. So for example, they won't let you add rent, utilities, any credit cards that you have, any bank credit that you have, if you really look at the list of what they will add, let you add, it's very few things. And as a business owner, if you can't add utilities and you can't add your rent, and if you can't add uh, bank credit and credit cards, then what happens is there's not a lot of other things you can add. And so this is why I want to show you two other ways to get around this so you don't have to make that investment. Now, if you have good personal credit, there's another option that's available where you can get up to 150000 in unsecured no doc financing. This is 0% rates for 6 to 18 months, and you get it even as a startup. And what happens is you're basically issued five business credit cards or more with what's called cash out capability. So they kind of function like credit cards in the sense that they give you 0% rates, but they function in the form of credit lines because you could physically take all the cash out of the card and do it at 0%. So it's a hybrid. It's really an amazing program that combines the best of business credit cards and lines. And these report to to the business credit reporting agencies. Now, these do require a personal guarantee, but the great thing is, is that if you go with this, you're putting five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar limits on your business credit cards or business credit reports to start, and you're doing it through five or more accounts. So this is a great way to go if you have good credit, because you need about a 680 FICO score to get this. So again, these accounts give you five trade lines with high limits on your business credit reports. And here's an example of somebody that received 61. 
$31,400 in this type of financing. And here's a look at a couple of their actual approvals. So this helped them get what they needed to do even as they were just getting their business started. So this account works for startups. It just requires a good credit score, about a 680 FICO score from you or a guarantor to get. In the video three, we're going to talk about exactly how you can get access to this program to streamline your business credit building process. Now, there's another option as well. And this third option doesn't require good credit. You're not even providing a social security number to get approved. And this is through what are called starter vendors. Now, these are vendors that will give you credit even if you have none. And they report the credit to the business credit reporting agencies. They often, off, uh, often offer terms such as net 30, which means you have 30 days to pay what you borrow versus a revolving account where you could pay a little minimum payment over time. And you've got to find vendors that do report to the business reporting agencies and who will approve you with no prior credit, which is the hardest thing to do if you're going this route. Now, once you have five of these accounts reporting, then you can start to get store credit cards. Okay, so some of these starter vendors will include Uline, Quill, um, even a Wells Fargo secure credit card. Wells Fargo does require better credit, but this is an example of how this program works. But the problem again is to get five accounts is really tough to do because these starter vendors are very hard to find because 90% of the trade vendors that are out there don't report to the business credit reporting agencies and forums and other information online is oftentimes inaccurate because so many vendors often stop reporting and then the information you're accessing and buying things at vendors that you think report never ends up happening and you wait months to discover that they don't. So the hardest part of building business credit is finding vendors that do report and again, in video three, we're going to map out how you can access the largest database of these vendors to expedite your business credit building. Now, once you have five accounts reporting, then you can start to get revolving credit with limits that are 10 to 100 times higher than consumer credit cards. It's very common to see limits of $2,000, four, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, even within 60 days of you starting to build your business credit. Within six months, you'll oftentimes surpass limits of thirty or $40,000 those are individual credit card limits that don't require a personal guarantee. And these include store credit cards with most major retailers. You can also get fleet credit for fuel and vehicle repairs and maintenance, which works great for anybody in the transportation industry, for example, as well, once you have at least five accounts reporting. So here's a real example of what this looks like. And here's a real client that uses the finance suite, and she actually has obtained all these type of actual approvals. So you could see what possible from two thousand dollars at places like sprint t-mobile um other type of phone sources forty five hundred dollars at amazon remember walmart um also is another great source that you can buy a lot of different types of things at five six seven eight ten twelve thousand dollars and you can see how diverse the type of credit she is from getting twelve five at apple to getting seven thousand dollar at bj's which just is a visa card that you can actually use anywhere you could use this bj's credit card at costco even if you wanted to all the way up to getting fifteen thousand dollar gas cards and office um, depot cards and you know Sunoco, Sears, Costco, Best Buy, uh, Dell, Ford, you know even getting vehicle financing through Ford even in her industry needing to be able to get roofing supplies to do roofing for what she does in her business and being able to get seventy five thousand dollar individual limit account none of this credit required a personal guarantee None of this credit required a personal credit check. So what's nice about this is you can see what's really possible with just one person and what they've obtained across the board. Everything from fuel cards and fleet cards to cash credit cards at places like BJ's to places to get office supplies like Office Depot and other hardware supplies and computers at places like Apple, all the way into getting vehicle financing at places like Ford. This is what's really possible with business credit. Again, you can see how the limits grow from two to 5,000 in the early stages to then moving into 10 or 15,000 stages, 15 in the middle type stage, and then in the end, being about six months in, getting the 20, 40, even $75,000 type of limit account. So you can see what's really possible as you continue to build business credit. Now, when you have 10 accounts reporting, then you can start to get to cash credit cards. Then you can start to get to Visa cards, MasterCards, American Express cards you can use anywhere. And you can also get auto vehicle financing here as well without 
without the personal guarantee, without the personal credit check. And here's some real approvals. You can see 12,000, 10,000. Here's one for 22,000, one for 15,000. Here's one for 10,000 from Chase and one from 8,000 from a Chase Inc. card. Here's one for $7,000. Here's another one for $10,000 from American Express. Another 10,000. Here's one for $24,000 from American Express. Another different account for $10,000. So again, these are the kind of real approvals that you're able to attain when you're going through the process of building your actual business credit. And here's another testimonial from Marlon so you can see as he's even holding up pictures of all the credit cards that he's received. I was looking for a fast way to get money to grow my consumer credit business. After failing to get approved for loans with several banks, I discovered the finance suite and after getting initial vendor credit accounts, I continued applying and getting all types of credit now have over 100 business credit cards in my wallets, totaling over a million in total available credit. I have fleet credit that I use for auto repairs and fuel. I have cash credit cards with most major banks, Bank of America and Wells Fargo. I secured almost all this credit without a personal credit check and without a personal guarantee. And I've been able to now get loans with many sources, including PayPal, Cabbage, with low rates and loan amounts over $100,000. Now, it's important to note that this testimonial and the samples might not be common testimonials. Anytime that we mention a testimony, testimonial, the Federal Trade Commission wants us to reference that this might not be the same result you get. When it comes to business credit building, the results of what you get depends on how much credit you apply for. Marlon has a lot of accounts because he applies for a lot of accounts. He constantly uses a lot of credit. If you're not applying for a lot of accounts or you're not using a lot of credit, then obviously you may not need a hundred different credit cards. You may not need the loans, but in the business credit world, what you get really is determined based on what you're actually applying for. So soon to come in the next video, we're going to be diving in. We're going to talk about how to get business loans and credit lines, regardless of current consumer credit quality, even when banks say no. We're going to talk about how to get loans with interest rates lower than 5%. And we even have examples of programs you can get with less than 2%. How to get loans with no collateral, how to get no doc credit lines, even as a startup business and much much more. So hopefully you got a lot of good information here out of video one. If so, you're really going to enjoy video two because in video one, we wanted to basically give you an overview of how the business credit building process works. And video two, we dive into loans. We dive into credit lines. We start pulling back the layers and revealing to you that the majority of loans aren't coming from big banks. Over 98% of financing isn't. It's coming from these alternative financing sources. We're going to talk more about that and give you the easiest way to get money for your business even when you think there's no way you can get financing at your own bank. And then in video three, we tie it all together. We show you how to get all of this in one easy to follow, easy to go through place to give you the most access to capital at the best terms and the easiest way to build business credit where you don't have the hurdles and the obstacles and you can access the vendor accounts and bypass a lot of these very expenses, very expensive expenses that you may pay, whether it be $2,500 for credit monitoring or 400 a year for 411 or $2,000 with Dun & Bradstreet. We're going to show you in video three to how to get through almost all those expenses so you don't have to pay those things, making it easy to build your business credit, quick to build your business credit, affordable to build your business credit, as well as easy to access all different types of loans and credit lines. So we'll see you in video two where we're talking more about how to get loans and credit lines for your business with super low interest rates. We'll look forward to seeing and talking with you then.